Hello everyone, uh, I hope you can all hear me well. If there's issue with the sound as usual, let me know in the chat. Uh, and thank you for tuning in on the deck. Uh, it's the first time we do a live stream this season. Uh, hopefully you're all enjoying season three so far. We have a lot of things to talk about. The main thing uh, that we want to talk about today is show you and talk about uh, the upcoming 3.1 update coming hopefully next week. Um, I have two guests with me as usual. Uh, you probably know them by now if you watched episodes of the, get in the, of the deck in the past. Sorry. First guest with me tonight, uh, today, sorry, is Ernest. Uh, Ernest, how are you doing? Yay! Okay, <laughs> hey guys, it's me. It's me again. It's 3.1. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about 3.1. Hi, Alexi. Yes. I'm so good. We'll be playing 3.1, but 3.1 will only hit the servers uh, next week. So it'll be like a, a preview event kind of thing. Um, and this is what your third, fourth time now on the deck? Third, I think. Third. Cool. Are you feeling comfortable? Yeah. All right. Always comfortable. All right, cool. Um, my second guest, uh, you probably guess who it is by now because he's there pretty much every time, is Samuel So. <laughs> Sam, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing great. Uh, it's nice to uh, be here again on the deck. Uh, as always, to share uh, some improvements that we are bringing to players with our mid season patches. So. Uh, excited to show off what we will be releasing next <coughs> week. Uh, I think it's the first time that we are actually uh, showing and playing a deck. Yes, uh, it's the first stream. time that we're showing the future. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah, first time we are showing the future release uh, in a in a way. So I'm I'm sure <coughs> it'll be more exciting than uh, than previously. Yeah. So so the idea is really to spend a bit of time going through the changes that are coming at three point one. Um, Sam and Ernest here are going to be playing the game as usual, but with a build that is not yet released. So there might be issues, hopefully everything goes smoothly. But they'll try to show you as much as possible and as much as they can uh, what's coming with 3.1. Um, and of course, we'll spend time also answering questions from the community. So if you have any question, uh, please leave it on the chat. I'm getting feedback already from the chat that the sound is good. So fingers crossed everything goes well, uh, goes well on the technical side this time. Um, we've also been collecting questions from the chat beforehand, so we have a list of questions that we want to go through as well. Uh, but yeah, send the questions and uh, of course let us know as well how you're feeling about Season 3 so far. Uh, we've received a lot of feedback and we're working on a lot of things, but it's always good for us to know how you all are <coughs> feeling about Season 3 in general. So, getting started, uh, I am now looking at Ernest playing the game. What are you doing, Ernest? I'm in a hostile takeover. I'm trying to make sure that I build my Helm Empire. Yeah, as usual. Gotta get those pieces of it. Cool. What about you, Sam? Where are you at in the game right now? Uh, for me, I'm also redeeming my Helm leases. Uh, like Alexis shared earlier, this is a this, this is a dev build, so we also have dev accounts here. Uh, just trying to get it up to speed so that uh, we can show some of the stuff that we have for. 3.12. Yeah, so for context, both Sam and Ernest are playing on test accounts, right? Like I said before, this is not the live version of the game, so they should not be encountering any other players unless we have other devs playing. Um, so it's not their real account, but obviously we've given them a bit of uh, progress and, and gold and everything so that they can show you stuff. The first thing we want to talk about coming with 3.1, uh, as some of you might know in the chat, there's a big date coming up on the 19th of September. Sam, do you want to tell us a little bit more about what's happening around the 19th of September outside the game and in the game? Right. Uh, on 19th of September, it will be... Uh, oh, talk like a pirate day. So, uh, in fact, there will be 
there'll be some activities in our own <laughs> studio to celebrate that but more for players uh, what we're offering is uh, that there will be a free gift that you can claim from your mailbox <coughs> and UB Connect so that will be available for uh, the entire week once uh, the patch drops from 17th of September all the way until uh, the maintenance on 24th of September so there are free uh, items and uh, firework as well so uh, and plus a bunch of material so do check it out and claim it during the week and in addition for that weekend from friday from friday from thurs thursday from thursday friday saturday and sunday for four days you will have a uh, double infamy as well so it's a good opportunity to uh, make progress on your smuggler pass uh, especially at the start of the new season yeah, so it's basically a, a little event that we're celebrating, like Talk Like a Pirate Day is happening on the 19th. So from the 17th to the 24th, free gifts for everybody through Eves of Connect. From the 19th to the 22nd, double infamy in the game. So you get to get more kingpin chests basically in a faster, a faster rate, right? So everybody can celebrate that day. And hopefully, like if anybody, any of you is like dressing up for Talk Like a Pirate Day, feel free to send us your pictures and cosplays of yourself dressed as a, as a pirate. It would be cool uh, for us to see it. Okay, now let's get into like the the key changes that are coming with 3.1. Um, I think the first one, uh, which is going to be making a lot of people happy, hopefully, is regarding the map. So in 2.2, we made some significant changes to the map. So maybe Sam, you can talk a little bit more about this. What were those changes, and what we're doing to improve on those changes? Right. So in 2.2, what we did was introduce a lot of uh, well event changes. So they are now running on a schedule. Uh, what you can see here uh, with 3.1 is that we have reduced the visual space that uh, is required for all of those. So these tend to clutter the map uh, much less now. And uh, we have also added some sort of visual polish and indicator to, to indicate you know, whether something is active and also uh, in which direction the countdown is happening. So you can see like for this uh, sea monster it's uh it's active and it's ending soon uh and then there are some other activities that still have quite a timer on them in addition one of the other things that we notice about the map clutter is age of screen markers so uh they are the markers at the bottom of the screen you see here that indicate to you that uh activity is uh available outside of where you're looking at um previously we sh displayed all uh events uh, map markers but with 3.1 we have now filtered it to the most uh, relevant to you which are the active and closest ones for each activity this uh, behavior uh, is a change to make things more less cluttered to make things less cluttered yes <laughs> and easier for players to locate uh, objectives and activities that are relevant to them but uh, we know that players also want uh, to be able to see all of the different activities. So it's now available as a setting. You can toggle all or active only, and you can also toggle uh, all or closest only. So if you s turn everything to all, it will be the current behavior that you have in season three now. And if you toggle to active only and closest only, which will be the default once 3.1 hits, uh, you'll get a much uh, less cluttered map. So just for, again for a comparison, this is what you would normally have, whereby you have all the uh, events at the side of the screen that are being shown. But if you would like a less cluttered view, what you would also be able to do is go to the interface, customize user interface, and turn them to active only or closest only. That yeah. should allow players to find what they need. Yeah, so basically the, the feedback we got from the community was that it could be a bit overwhelming when you log in, you see all these icons, right? So essentially what we're doing is giving you more options to decide how much information you want to display on the map so that you can be more comfortable when checking the map, right? There are a few other changes uh, in relation to the visibility of war events, but uh, I think we'll leave the details to the patch notes itself. Yes. As a reminder, we're playing update 3.1 that's coming next week. The patch notes will be released on the website probably the day before the update. 
Um, but obviously we're trying to show you a little bit about what's coming uh, with this debate and what you can look forward to. Um, another topic, uh, I think for you as well, Sam, is regarding world events visibility. Can you talk a little bit about what's changing when it comes to world events and their visibility? So There are a lot of activities in the world uh, that may not be immediately relevant for you. So, for example, if you are ship rank four and just starting out, well, looking at the map and seeing a ship rank thirteen activity would not be immediately relevant to you. So, events that are too high above your infamy or your uh, ship rank will also be uh, not shown on the map. If players sail past, they can still participate in them in those activities but uh, we want to focus the player experience for the earlier players to make sure that the activities that are presented in the map are also relevant to them very cool so i feel like uh i don't know where ernest is now in the game what are you up to ernest you've had time Ooh, to me i'm just sailing around the world uh capture i just captured my hostile takeover so yeah cool taking care of my end game empire are you ready to answer your first question? What is my first question? <laughs> so another thing that's coming with 3.1. Uh, so obviously season two, uh, we received a lot of feedback about people saying they didn't have enough warehouse space. We increased warehouse space. We know some people still want more warehouse space and we're looking into that as well. But we're also doing changes to help people better sort out their items in the warehouse, in the ship loadouts. So can you take, uh, talk to us a little bit about what's happening with 3.1 and in particular stacking of uh, in ship customization basically right let me show you in fact uh, manage ship I think people but are very happy with this change <laughs> I know the devs on the floor are super happy about this change and it's a little thing well. but it makes a big difference <laughs> I mean I commended uh, Sam the other day and his team for you know doing uh, basically God's work look at that <laughs> 25 carronades stacking all in one slot. You know, at least the, the sidebar now is no longer infinitely long. It's all in one place. So you can see, uh, if you have uh, multiple copies of the same item, it will just stack in one spot. It makes inventory management so much simpler. Uh, this is for weapons, this is for armor, and this is also for furniture as well. I think some people are excited about this change in the, in the chat. I know Spammels is here, seems happy, so that's always a good plus for us to have a cool content creator happy about the changes we're making. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I was people giggling. were... Yeah. I mean, I was giggling <laughs> like a little girl when we, when we had this one. People were... Uh, I think what we have noticed were players uh, obtaining a lot of copies of uh, single furniture and also... Uh, weapons and armors mm -hmm. and uh, this is part of what we are doing for inventory management i know that there's a request for more warehouse space uh stay tuned uh for future updates it's yeah so uh, because i see yeah. the that comment <laughs> on the chat as well like we are not uh doing this instead of increasing warehouse space we are looking at every possibility for us to, to make warehouse space um less of an issue right so there are different ways we can go increasing warehouse space is like basically the simplest one but it's 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 got its limits, right? We are we are always going to run out of space inventory, so we need to also make sure we implement systems and features to help better sorting of uh, items in the warehouse. Mm. Cool. Um, question for you, Sam. The question that was asked for us, I think, on Reddit or on Discord. Uh, what's happening with the voice chat? What are we doing to improve the voice chat? Right, so uh, voice chat remains a priority for for us, debugging and making sure that there's stability. So there's still ongoing work for that. Uh, we haven't abandoned it uh, efforts and we'll continue doing it until the voice chat is super stable. Uh, but one of the things that we have done at least is uh, we've fixed uh, we've fixed an issue whereby it's it was telling players that you would be disconnected from the voice chat when you weren't actually disconnected. So uh, one of the feedback that we have seen as well is that players don't know 
if uh, the voice chat is uh, currently working or not. So what we have also done in the meantime while we address all of the uh, core issues behind is we added a successfully re reconnected to the chat service message. So if you see that message, you know that at least you are able to interact with other players as well. For that. So uh, it continues to be a priority for us uh, for addressing the text and voice chat issues. So uh, rest assured, we haven't uh, we haven't stopped looking to them. Cool, very cool. And if you have more feedback, I know some people uh, would really like to have a proximity voice chat, for example, and things like that. So if you have more feedback on the voice chat or communication tools in general in the game, what are the tools you'd like us to implement for you to better communicate with other people that you're playing with, uh, please give us feedback. It's something we are interested in working on, so don't just take sharing feedback with us on this. Um, next question. I don't know who wants to take this one. Uh, what's happening with job board rewards in 3.1? Ernest, uh, is that for you? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so there's some uh, context here. I think in uh, when we're looking at... Uh, season one and two in general we received a lot of feedback that uh you know there's not enough rewards we are a little bit stingy with the way we are uh we are giving out things and so one of the big things of season three is actually to review all of that in multiple places not just job bots but for things like merchant convoys as well so uh i believe in 3.1 we are taking a good look at what rewards are there in the job bot uh, making sure you have your silver, making sure you have a little bit more crafting items so that you can set off your goals, you know, at the beginning of the season. Uh, look, you want to craft this item, you want to craft this ship, you have those options available uh, through uh, choosing more merchant convoys to approach, more world events to approach, and also in the job boards that you you take on as well. Yep. Oh, awesome. I'm I'm reading just a side note. I'm reading comments on the chat that some people are able to claim their deck firework from uh, Twitch drops. So I'm happy it's working. I wasn't 100 percent sure it was going to work. So glad oh, it's has it been like 15 minutes already? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So if we if for everybody who's watching for the first time, we have uh, an exclusive the deck firework that you can claim through Twitch drops. If you're watching us on Twitch today, um, it's the first time we're doing but it's probably not going to be the last time so if you miss it this time you will get other uh, opportunities to get it don't worry too much about it uh unfortunately i don't think either of you have it in the game right now so you can't show it off but it looks really cool uh we'll try to share some uh, information about it more in the future so you can see how it looks and hopefully if you don't get it this time you can tune in the next stream and and get and get it um next question from the community uh no sorry well, next thing that was uh part of 3.1 is regarding sorry are oh you yeah, merchant convoy drop rates who wants to take that one what's happening with the merchant convoy drop rates so drop rates for context has been a big topic uh throughout the entire season two we've increased drop rates for like most of the activities i think i think from 2.2 and with season three we're still looking into improvements on certain drop rates that we can increase or change to make sure that people have a fair chance to obtain the rewards they want. But we are doing something more specifically about Merchant Convoy in 3.1. Uh, Sam, Ernest, who wants to talk about this one? Ooh. Uh, I, think, I think I can take this. Uh, so for we have increased drop rates, uh, quantity and added new drops in the Merchant Convoy uh, rewards. So we found that players weren't necessarily engaging too much with the merchant convoy compared to other activities. So we are giving materials, adding more materials that can be used for ship upgrades such as Roselle cloth, uh, wood pitch, lacquer, dry casting sand and, and some others. And hopefully that would also help with the ship upgrade uh, loop and uh, the attractiveness of uh, the merchant convoy altogether. Cool. So increased drop rates, basically, which is always uh, I think an appreciated thing. Yeah, but also like for uh, the items that players yeah. uh, really need to upgrade their ships as well. Now there are more uh, options to uh, achieve those. <laughs> yeah. So just to add a bit more context, it is something that we're following up very closely, right? On on every. Basically, every single item item in the game, we're making sure that the drop rates are acceptable, uh, and we are doing adjustments progressively to make sure that um, 
you know, people get a fair chance to get uh, the items they're looking for without too much flying behind it. Um, next item on the list, 3.1, and I know this one has been something that the community has been asking for a long time. Uh, partial POI funding. Who can talk about this? What is happening with this? And, and yeah. Hey, let me, while I fight my dragon, uh, try to do this. Hopefully I don't die, eh? Yes. Hopefully I don't <laughs> die. Okay, wait, wait, let me just, you know, um, sail away from my dragon. Alright, so... Let's go to the Helm Empire screen. And then let's look at this totally not suspicious Duister East Foundry that we just purchased using our Helm leases on our dev accounts. And if you go inside here, you can see at the very bottom of our list, top up two days, zero hours, 9,733 9, silver. So previously, if you come to this screen and you try to, you know, uh, interact with this button and then you're just like you know I'm gonna go I'm gonna head out for dinner and I really want to top off my manufacturer is ending in the next 20 30 minutes you couldn't do it and so this was a widely requested uh, community feature and we were asking ourselves for the last two seasons so why can't we do it well now the answer is you finally can you can <laughs> finally top off your manufacturer and go for dinner in peace and that is what we are calling a great feature in 3.1 Sam, how do you feel about this one? I think it's great. Like I that that has been something that players have been complaining. Like you know, should I stay up yes. for an extra two hours and lose two hours of my sleep just so that I can top up those manufact like refund those manufacturers to the full to the max again? Uh, <coughs> but now with this, uh, I think people will have a. Finally, we'll have a proper sleep schedule. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> be functional uh, the next day. <laughs> uh, preserving families, you know, making sure that, you know, uh, everybody goes to bed on time. Yeah. So, I hope you guys en enjoy the change. Uh, there, are, there are some other uh, QOL <laughs> improvements that we are still looking to bring to players for uh, the Helm Empire and Helm Management in general. Uh, but yeah, keep your eyes peeled in the future updates as well. I do feel like I need to correct something you said though, Sam. You said that uh, the committee has been complaining about this, but as far as I know, the committee doesn't complain. They provide very constructive feedback most oh. of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's uh, an answer to one of the comments on the chat that people don't believe that they complain. <laughs> uh, in, in all jokes aside, like all feedback is good feedback, even if sometimes it's a bit, um, you know, Criticizing the game is not necessarily uh, a bad thing, right? It's, it helps us address the key issues that we need to address in the game. So even if you feel like you're complaining, just tell us what's bothering you with the game and we'll do our best to address it as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like as devs, we, we, we take all this feedback, all this constructive feedback very personally and very very harshly. And like we really want to deliver something that is 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 great for players so whenever there's like the slightest inconvenience for players or like they have some interesting cool constructive feedback we will also want to address those as early as possible yeah absolutely um there's a couple more things uh coming up to point where we want to talk about before we jump into answering questions uh the next one is about dynamic dragon sea monsters who wants to talk about dynamic dragon sea monsters and what is dynamic dragon sea monsters? Alright, so one of the things that we have actually incurred as we included all these fast travel alternatives around the map is that, um, you know, players just zip around the map and they don't really have any incentive to explore the world. And so uh, in the previous deck, you guys met uh, Gabriel, he's the world director, and this has hurt him, you know, this has you know, caused him physical pain. Uh, and so one of the things that we're actually doing is that we have created something called dynamic uh, world events, dynamic sea monsters. So not every world event that is revealed on the map, uh, not every world event is revealed on the map. Sometimes you might sail around and then you might find a Tylosaurus or two in the wild and then you will be able to engage these and call for help for them. So these are some of the things that we are starting to explore as to how to reinstill life in the Indian Ocean uh, to encourage exploration. And there are uh, further plans in uh, seasons ahead 
uh, I can't share too much now, but this is what we're aiming to uh, reintroduce back into the game, making exploration fun, making exploration uh, meaningful as well. Yeah. So I think one of the things you guys also noticed that uh, in the early half of the game, there's tons of stuff going on. Uh, what happened is that we also introduced low-level uh, world events so that once you hit your medium-sized ships, you can engage some of these uh, big ticket items like the dragon I just encountered, the low-level, the lower-level uh, shadow beast as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, Ernest, but that is why some players have been uh, sharing screenshots and videos of uh, massive fights. Sometimes they're fighting against the pest, and they see a Tylo popping up. I, I think that's the reason, right? Basically, yep. in some cases, you might end up fighting two world events uh, at the same time, or yep. having those two world events fight each other even is possible, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, I mean, I know for some people it's going to be a bit frustrating because it's going to increase the difficulty of the fight, uh, but the goal is to make the game a bit more dynamic and, and have a bit more like unexpected moments happen uh, at any given time, right? Yep. So one of the things, I guess, uh, actually this is an interesting talking point. Uh, we we had this conversation with, uh, I guess, uh, Mac. Right, he was really thinking about how the Indian Ocean is really sanitized at the launch of season one. World events happen in isolation. You don't have any of this what you call cool moments where the Tylosaurus is attacking Lapes or Lapes is attacking Tylosaurus, and there's an opportunity uh, in the chaos for you to get free loot or free pieces of eight. And so we weighed uh, two options. Right, one is the super sanitized Indian Ocean that is uh, clean and fair and the Indian Ocean that is chaotic and unpredictable. And so we ask ourselves, is it really uh, all or nothing, right? And we realize the answer is actually it's not, right? And we get to choose a balance between the two. And so uh, what we did is that we opened up the world a little bit and we allow world events to spawn on top of each other. We allow uh, dynamic events to spawn near existing world events. So you could see some of this systemic interaction between the world e events. Of course, uh, this came at a risk, right? Uh, we don't want uh, two megalodon, maybe four megalodon spawning at the same time and causing uh, the server to crash. So these are things that we are constantly monitoring and we are also monitoring its effect on uh, the, the play experience. So uh, do share with us your feedback, your thoughts about what you think uh, and how you think this is going. And uh, it's something we, are, we will monitor and we'll adjust as we go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I personally love seeing when people share screenshots and videos, like basic, basically sharing how surprised they were to see those moments happening. So whether it's a good change or not, let us know. I hope uh, hope people will enjoy it. Uh, there's probably going to be some <coughs> balancing done, uh, what needed to be done to make sure it doesn't become too difficult or too challenging for people. But uh, yeah, we're very curious to see how people feel about this in general. Uh, one more topic I think, Ernest, you might be able to talk to us about a little bit. We are doing changes to the repair motor. Oh, haha! <laughs> what change is that? Okay. Um. Ah, I don't have a repair motor on me right now. This is so upsetting. It's breaking <laughs> my streak of showing you guys just at the right moment. Alexi asked me this question. Okay. Um. So one of the things that we are ex uh we have just put in to three point one and you might call it a minor change, but we, we we thought it was a huge change is that you can now self heal with your own motor. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a little bit of a funny thing, but you could imagine that right now, if I had the motor with me, I, I don't have a motor, I have a mine launcher with me, I would fire it, and as I sail into the circle of the motor, it would actually heal me, a little bit like the repair spring loaders. And it's, it's quite funny, because in the real world, if you had a repair equipment, you would just drop it right on the floor in front of your ship. You wouldn't even bother, have, you, don't, you don't have to fire it on yourself. So it's a little bit of a groundedness question as well, but... Uh, it, it makes very little sense. Uh, but there are two reasons why this this is happening. One, uh, as a healer, I want to be able to heal myself. Uh, we realize that a lot of healers are unable to heal themselves unless they bring uh, Little Grace, which is the repair spring loader. And so we wanted to create that option uh, for players, for, for our healers as well. And second, it's because it's simply fun. right? Uh, we don't really want to... Uh, in, in this particular case, we are prioritizing gameplay over uh, realism or over groundedness as well. Yep. So we're hoping that you guys uh, appreciate it. We're hoping you guys uh, enjoy it a little bit more. 
Uh, and uh, welcome to the world of uh, skill where you have to fire your repair motor slightly in front of you to heal yourself. And unless this comes in preparation for the PvP mode, right? Ooh, I, I, I didn't say any of that. <laughs> but yes, it's in preparation for the PvP mode. Yeah, so actually uh, one point on this is uh, when it comes to these kind of changes and, and game balancing when it comes to ships and weapons and equipment in general, do let us know how you feel about your favorite ship or which ship you feel should be stronger or, or nerfed or whatever because I, I, it's something that we want to do on a more regular basis to like make sure we address the balance of every ship, every equipment to make sure that every ship has its potential and every ship has its weakness as well. Uh, so it's very important that we hear your feedback if you feel about if you feel strongly about certain ships or certain equipment being either overpowered or underpowered uh, do let us know we are looking at taunt uh, which is a new uh, perk from season three uh, we know some people feel like it's uh, overpowered currently we're looking into it and we might do some changes about that in the future Cool. I think that's basically the key highlights for 3.1. These is not. These are not all the changes that are coming. Of course, the full patch notes will be published on Monday. There's a lot of bug fixing. There's a lot of additional changes we're making. Uh, but these are the key highlights that we wanted to talk about a little bit today. We also have a lot of questions from the community that we've been collecting uh, from since last week. Maybe just as an additional note for yes, go ahead. for 3.1 as well. Uh, like Alexis said, this isn't the full list of. Uh, changes that we are delivering for 3.1. In 3.1, a big part of it was also to address a lot of the bugs that have been reported in uh, through the bug reporter and also a lot of the other things that uh, we spotted as a team uh, following the release of 3.0 as well. So um, improving the quality and improving the overall responsiveness and stability of the game and for players to be able to continue uh, their contracts without uh, being blocked or uh, having encounters which uh, w which would work according to, to the gameplay designs is also uh, something that is super important to us when we deliver uh, updates such as these. So there will be a whole list of uh, bug fixes so those would also be part of uh, the update coming on next Tuesday. Yeah, very cool. So are we ready to jump into questions? Oh, only the toughest part of the day. <laughs> Alright, let's okay. go! So the first topic is kind of covering a lot of different things. I grouped them up together because it's actually asking a lot of questions about the future of the game. Uh, so there's a lot of questions that we collected from the chat about a possible map expansion, about new factions, about what's coming in season 4 about large shape etc etc so i think you can jump between uh, each other on uh, how you want to cover this but essentially uh, as a as a head start i just want to put a big disclaimer we just started season three so we're not quite ready yet to uh, share too many details about season four or what's coming after season four the only thing i'm going to say is that season four is uh, essentially going to be a big wrap up of the entire story that has happened uh, since the launch of the game so it will answer a lot of questions you have about the overall story, about why are all these things happening in the Indian Ocean? Why is there like so many people coming with each season trying to uh, challenge you and challenge the helm and uh, basically take a, a, a part of the, 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 the pie, which is the Indian Ocean, right? So there's a lot of cool things coming with season four. We can't go into details, uh, but expect it to be a big wrap up for the entire year. And also probably more importantly, also a good way for us to uh, kind of tease you about what's coming with year two in Scrambles. With that being said, who wants to talk about map expansion? Oh, <laughs> map expansion. Yes. Um, so it's been a topic that's been coming out uh, a lot uh, more and more like in recent weeks, I think. Uh, people are kind of like hoping it's going to happen at some point. What can we say? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, ooh, this is a tricky one. Okay. Uh, we have uh, built quite a bit of the upper portion of the map in the past, right? Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, exploring what it could mean and what it could be. But I think at this juncture, uh, we are not ready to share more or talk a lot more about it. That is the truth. Uh, the reality is that uh, opening up that entire upper portion of the map uh, involves some complexity, both on server, 
both on uh, population on the server and uh, I think there's some uh, some of the levels there are are not fully fleshed out not fully completed the story there isn't fully fleshed out isn't fully completed and so I think uh, we'll share when there is more plans and details available to share uh, but right now it's not something that we think will be coming in the medium term or the short term this is something a little bit further out in the long term yeah I think I think to add to this uh, I mean it was definitely something that we had planned from the beginning right with the map we eventually we want to increase the map we want to give new regions to explore and new things to do um, but we also feel like the game is in a position right now where there's already a lot of things for to keep people uh, occupied obviously and for us to also improve on and build upon before we start opening up to new territories like so like you said very well unless there is space there there are plans for us to use that space uh, it's just a question of when is a good time for us to do that I think concurrently as well, uh, in addition to looking at how we can uh, open up the map, is also looking up, uh, looking out for new opportunities for us to host events that are, uh, say, let's just put it in different places as well. So there's a lot of uh, s technical and system uh, explorations that are being done so that we can uh, host activities that bring players together more details will be soon yeah and i think there's a comment from Samuels on the chat that uh, makes total sense and it's also very much aligned with the way we're thinking is that when we do expand the map we want it to be something significant it's not just hey there's a new region to explore it's like it needs to come with something that adds something more to the game in terms of game mechanics in terms of exploration in terms of fashion etc etc so new loot yes. new stories new art so we do yeah. have plans, uh, but those plans are quite ambitious. So when it happens, it will uh, be quite significant. Um, and by the way, we're talking a lot about uh, the north of the map, but as far as we are concerned, we're not necessarily only limited to that part of us. You can see that there's a hidden region on the north of the map, and that's obviously a, an obvious next step. But it doesn't mean that in the future we can't expand that map even further to mm. other regions of the world. So we'll see how we go. Uh, Anything we want to share about large ships? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> boy! Our favorite topic. Favorite topic. Yeah. Is there a large ship nearby that I can spy glass? Oh no, there isn't a large ship nearby. There was literally a post on Reddit this morning. As <laughs> somebody sharing the you know the loading loading screen with the cool large ship, asking us why we're teasing the community like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. So I can answer why we're teasing the community. The, the, the answer is that we're not teasing the community, we're just reminding the community that eventually large ships will come to the game. Eventually, yes, yes. Uh, it's at the very top of our priority list. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's <laughs> at, it's somewhere on the priority <laughs> list, right? Uh, the community is very excited about large ships and so are we. Uh, the last time I shared, you know, uh, there are a couple of issues. What if a large ship sits in front of a river? What are we going to do? We've got some answers in these spaces. We've got some solutions. And the question is, when can we reveal? And when can we reveal more? The answer is not today. <laughs> but I want to <laughs> ask everybody to stay tuned to our future season plans. Yes. It'll be ready when it comes. I think if I can uh, clarify what you meant by saying it's not double priority, it's definitely a key topic that we are talking about and looking into and working on like quite regularly, right? It's it's not something we have somewhere on a whiteboard and we ignore until it's time to look into it. Like yep. We are actively looking into it. So it's, it's definitely planned. It's coming. We're just not ready to tell you yet when it's coming or how it will be coming. But we're quite excited to, to show yeah. you eventually. Actually, I read... Uh, I, I think the last time I was on, we were talking a little bit about it and we asked the community to share some feedback on what did they think large ships should be. And uh, we have been monitoring our feedback. Uh, some of them, we have... Uh, basically uh, used to influence our decision making in the process uh it's not truly uh completed or ready to share so stay tuned to when the uh, game director and when the producer decides to share more information about it cool um ernest i think there's something we want you wanted to show us or at least talk about is the upcoming halloween event Oh, without spoiling too much, because I know you want to say everything, but you can't say everything. So, <laughs> tell, oh. us, tell us how cool it is without telling us everything. <laughs> oh, 
man, that's such a difficult, difficult um challenge. Um, let's just see that there will be a community centric world event. Uh, it's the first time we're trying something like that. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting way to put it, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the server has to come together to do something for something to happen. Sorry for being really ambiguous here. You can blame Alexi for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can, I, what I can say is that uh, we did have some internal and insiders testing the Halloween event. I don't want to overhype it, but I feel like they were pretty happy with the event in general. Um, and I think maybe you can tell us on this, but I believe that the Halloween event is introducing some gameplay mechanics that have not been in the game so far. Is there? I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Okay. But that, that's all <laughs> we can share. No, but I think, I think people will like it. I'm quite, uh, yeah, I look forward to see how people react to it. Yep. Um, there's a very broad question. I don't know who wants to answer that one. I can jump in as well if you need help. Um, Basically, the question is, uh, do we have any plans on where we want to go with the game in the future? And I think, okay, so to, for context, I try to understand uh, where that question coming from. I think for my player's perspective, we are season three, season four is coming soon. Uh, they know a little bit about season four, but not much. They don't know anything about what's happening after season four. So can one of you tell us, do we have plans for, any, for the game beyond season four? And like, are we excited about it? Like, without sharing too much detail. I think for sure, yes, we all already have the... We already know what we want to work on uh, in the upcoming seasons, beyond season 4, so 5, 6, 7, 8, and beyond that as well. And uh, at the end of the day, it's a matter of uh, when we can deliver uh, all these improvements and new and shiny stuff for players. And uh, so I would say that yes, we know where the game is uh, going in terms of the direction, but we are not ready just yet to share uh, and confirm on some of those, those details as well. So um, I believe usually we, we have like Mac and Nevin, the game director and senior producer on this project, uh, share more about the release of each season. So those will be the times whereby we can get a better, uh, where we can share a little bit more on what's uh, coming up for the future of the game as well. But yeah, I can I can totally confirm that there's a lot of super exciting things coming for year two, and we can't wait to share about. And yeah, uh, just just to chime in on that as well, it we are already working on things beyond season four, so. Uh, Lots of the things that we've discussed today are also work in progress already. Yeah, um, and I know I know we say that a lot, but it's uh, it's something that we really mean. Like we regularly uh, with the community team create threads on Reddit, on Discord, and on social media, asking us like, how do you feel about this season? But also, what are the things you'd like us to add to the game in the future? The reason we ask these regularly is because obviously with each season we add new features, we improve things. Uh, but we also want to plan things for the long-term future that are answering to what the community wants this game to become. It's very important for us to know what the community really wants to see in the game in the future uh, because that's where we get ideas from. I mean, of course, we have our own ideas, our own plans, uh, but sometimes we you know, we use the community feedback to adjust those plans and make sure that you know, further down the line, that thing you've asked maybe six months ago, there it is, it's in the game now. So if you have more ideas, if there are more things you want to do, obviously we talked about large ships, we talked about map expansion. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things you guys uh, and girls would like to see in the game, so don't hesitate to tell us what you want to see in the game in the future. Um, there was another question about cosmetics, so this one is quite specific. Uh, somebody said that uh, they are quite disappointed by how um, how the outfit we see for female players look uh, in terms of cosmetic and is asking if there's any plan for us to change that in the future. Um, I don't know if you know yep, what I'm so about. So there are plans to change that into the future. I think we put out a survey somewhere in Season 2 uh, whether we, whether players prefer uh, more fantastical uh, visuals or more realistic visuals. And... Uh, 
we have taken that into account and uh, do uh, I, I think as a note we are also developing many months many seasons ahead in terms of schedule so we can't exactly uh, make uh, changes too quickly on that front uh, but that has that feedback has already been taken into account and we are looking into uh, delivering more of what the player community wants on that part cool thank you the next question is a, is a question I, I quite like because I, I read the I read it yesterday and I clarified with our game director that I wasn't uh, thinking nonsense but it's something we can talk about without exactly saying what it's going to be so Ernest, I'm going to dump it on you as well. So I, I know you like tricky questions. Where oh, you, man. <laughs> you can't really say, but you have to say it anyways. So let's test your, your PR skills. Okay. So in each pirate then, in St. Anne and Telok Penjara, there are areas which are currently unused and look like they could potentially be used for something in the future. I'm talking about a specific area in St. Anne called the Rendezvous and another area in Telok Penjara called the Hunt. Uh-huh. Now, I know what they're going to be used for because I played it just on Monday. Do you know what they're going to be used for? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, Sam? It's the most PR answer. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so I, obviously I, I can't say <laughs> what they're going to be used for. What I can say is yes, they are going to be used for something very specific that's coming in the game in the midterm, I want to say. Uh, but essentially, yes, you see some locations in, in, in the bends and usually they look like, okay, there should be an NPC there that there should be like something for me to do as a player. Um, I'm not going to say what it is, but eventually, yes, there will be a purpose for both of these locations and that's happening, uh, yeah, relatively soon. Yeah. Um, linked to that question, there was also a kind of a question about like, basically the question was like, are we going to use those uh, areas to allow players to hire or customize a uh, first mate or uh, personalized crew and things like that. Is that something you're aware of in terms of community feedback? And can you tell us if we're doing anything, we're planning to do anything about we the crew in general? wouldn't have built that spot if we didn't have anything to... We, if we didn't have any plans that we wanted to expand into. Um, I'll say that uh, uh, we have... Um, we have intentions to make crew attack crew ability a little bit more interesting a little bit more dynamic as we go forward in the game uh, when that would happen not sure will that include the space in the den that you were just talking about I have no idea well, I can tell you no that's not what I, what I, what I, what I had in mind <laughs> <laughs> No, so I know I know two things. I know these two spots, specific spots, are going to be used for something very specific coming very soon. Uh, and I know that a bit further down the line, we also have plans to improve the way the crew works in the game. So there are two different things. Uh, but yes, is the answer to both questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can't say much. It's like like I said at the beginning of the stream, we are we are uh, very much like well. First of all, we're at the beginning of season three, so there's still a lot of things in season three that we want to tackle and and improve on. Season 4 is going to happen soon as well and there's a lot of cool things that we can't talk about just yet but we're very excited to introduce. And then there's the whole plan for year 2 that we will reveal closer to uh, when year 2 happens, right? So a lot of the things are based on the feedback. So a lot of the questions that I've seen uh, and I've collected are things that we are actively looking into and planning. We can't reveal yet exactly when it's going to happen but uh, yeah, there are a lot of things that we do. I think one, one thing to take note is that... Um, or a lot of these uh, big things that players are asking for, those are things that we want to deliver as well. And uh, we want to deliver it in a state that is a good quality and not just, uh, you know, we try and rush it out and it, it doesn't really fulfill that need. So we are taking, we are intentionally taking the time to sit down, plan, design, and also make this a reality. This would also include uh, developing the tech for it, also developing the systems, implementing it, and testing it across uh, various uh, platforms like insider programs and internal tests as well. So these things do take a bit of time to get out to players, but we, we remain like committed to delivering them and we want to uh, make sure that 
they come out in 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 a good quality so sometimes uh <laughs> we want them to come out a bit faster as well but uh we we are doing what we can to uh to answer those uh, player needs as well cool um next question um by the way, if you have questions on the chat that you really want to know, uh, I'm trying to follow up, but I don't see that many questions so far. Uh, but please, yeah, ask questions in the chat as well. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the chat so I can try to pick them up. Can and stuff. Um, there's a question about world exploration, and this one is quite specific as well. Uh, the question was, is there any chance we may at some point get the ability to explore the vast landscape? And I think what this means is that um, some players have noticed that in Outpost, or sometimes even like as they sail pa uh, past certain um, land areas, they notice some areas that look like they have been a bit more developed than others. And players are just wondering like if there's any plans in the future that will allow us to allow players to go on land more in those areas or explore more of the land areas. Uh. Ooh, <laughs> asking a lot of tricky questions today. I'm sorry. For me, uh, I guess. The easy one would would be uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are, uh, I mean, the Indian Ocean is a vast space it's filled with a lot of like mystery and a lot of stories. Um, we would like to expand on some of these topics in the future. Uh, right now, maybe too early to share. Yeah. I think I think it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning is that we want to make sure that we uh, take advantage of everything the game has to offer, right? So obviously the world is pretty vast. You can't access every part of the world, but if there's opportunities in the future to use that space to do something cool, we will. We won't. We will probably not just opening it up just for the sake of opening it up. Uh, but if we see a good value in terms of gameplay mechanics and content that we can bring through that world, I think of course we'll look into it, right? Um, there's also a question in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if Sam, you're aware of it because I haven't mm -hmm. heard about that. It seems like a bug. Uh, so find it. Um, going too fast. I lost it. So yeah, uh, some people are asking about missing blueprints. Uh, Apparently some blueprints that were available in the Smuggler Pass in Season 2 are no longer available in the vendor. I'm not sure if you're aware of that one, Sam. So the items that are available from Season to Season uh, do rotate on a regular basis in the uh, Black Market vendor. So uh, do check back from time to time to, to see a new stock of uh, equipment and items that and blueprints that are available from uh, past seasons as well. Yeah, so basically the question is blueprints from season 1 and season 2 were deleted from the carpenter. Blackwood now sells them. We want our blueprints back that were already unlocked. So um, I'm not sure if that's intentional or if that's a bug. So if you are encountering that issue, please uh, raise it up to us to the bug reporter so we can look into it. Uh, I haven't read that feedback until today, so I'm a bit uh, caught by surprise to be honest. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you have issues like that, if you feel like something is happening that shouldn't be happening, Either share it on Reddit uh, or Discord as a feedback or raise the bug on the bug reporter so we can uh, investigate and look into it. Yeah, from what I'm reading on the chat is that players have uh, already had it. Already right? had it, now yeah. it's gone. So I believe there might be a few fixes here and there for 3.1, but I think the best place to report all of this is still the bug reporter. And if you see an existing issue on the bug report already upvoted, the number of upvotes uh, does matter in, in the order in which we, we address all these issues as well. Yeah, so we'll, we'll follow up on this, um, you know what happened. This is me taking notes, by the way. <laughs> um, another question on status effect. Uh, I think maybe, Ernest, you can talk about this one. Yeah. So the question is threat effect, which I assume means taunt, uh, yep. is quite OP right now and makes ship that can easily utilize it way stronger. Are there any plans to balance it? 
So, yes. Um, we are monitoring the feedback around it. We are also monitoring the data around it. So I think I mentioned before that one of our sources of uh, key sources of feedback is actually data. And we're looking at like precisely how powerful it is and how much do we want to um, adjust it by. One of the things about status effects is that uh, we want different ship builds to bring different value to the to the multiplayer combat that we're looking at. And so for tanks, the status effect is actually for taunt, holding down aggro and reducing damage around uh, the, the targets that are taunted. Uh, we will take a look. Uh, when we started off with a 50% value, we thought that it was significant and strong enough to make tanks different. But uh, right now, it seems like the sentiment is shifting towards it's too strong, it's too powerful, especially for PvP combat. So we're going to take a look at that and we're going to make some uh, adjustments once the designers come back with some proposals as well. Cool. So yeah, balancing is an ongoing topic, right? Yeah, it's a bit tricky to balance between PvP and PvE. Uh, and I think right now uh, the, the challenge is re revolving around PvP. So since you mentioned PvP for the second time now, I feel like it's a good opportunity <laughs> for me to ask a big question. Um, there was a, quite a few people who were disappointed that our PvP mode that was announced back in July uh, didn't make it in Season 3. We said we'll communicate more about our decision to postpone it uh, when we're ready. I know we can't reveal too much yet, but does either of you want to talk a little bit about why we decided to take more time and what's happening and like how do we feel about the PvP mode basically? We had our insiders program run a test with the PvP mode and we felt like you know there were a couple of things more that we wanted to put in in line with those feedback uh, i can't go into too much detail because uh, a couple of these things are still work in progress and they might change along the way uh, but the assurance that we want to give is that we want to make sure that uh, pvp and pve have some correlation meaning to say that what you do in the indian ocean you can bring it back to the pvp uh, game mode that we're building. Yeah. So some of these things will take a little bit more time. Uh, a couple of things like uh, tracking data, uh, a couple of more things like balance. These are all things that we had to take a little bit more time to really make sure we solidify so that the PvP experience is about fairness. Uh, it's about builds that make sense that in, in the scheme of the game. We don't want to land up in a situation where uh, in a PvP mode, every single player lands up playing the same ship. And there's no strategy, there's no meaning to your, the selections that you've made. And hence, we are taking a little bit more time to examine what needs to be done, to make some, to polish up some edges in terms of the experience as well. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm personally quite confident that the feedback we got from insiders, there's a lot of cool things that we can do with it. So yeah an easy answer is like we want to make sure the pvp mode is as good as it can be and the feedback we receive from insiders uh i think is going to help us make it as good as it can be so we release it when it's ready essentially um we are running out of time already and there's so many questions we haven't answered i'm sorry if you have asked questions and we haven't had time to answer it uh, like I said, there'll be another stream coming up in uh, maybe four to five weeks. Uh, so we'll try to collect more questions and, and go over them as well. Um, there were questions about... Uh, one I wanted to answer. Yes, about mouse and keyboard. Um, so I think, Sam, you can probably answer that one. For context, uh, we did some uh, relatively significant changes on mouse and keyboard with Season 3. Uh, some people were a bit upset that uh, they were used to like using the wheel and now they have to use a hotbar. Um, and they asked if we could uh, basically revert the changes back. Uh, I know we're not completely reverting it, but I know we're doing some changes to address that feedback. So can you tell us right. more about that? Uh, so there was community feedback that, uh, well, let me switch to mouse and keyboard, that when you use a uh, item from the second wheel, the quick action bar or the quick action wheel at the bottom, uh, switches to that view. Uh, this wasn't intended, so it's now been fixed in uh, 3.2. So if you say, if you were to use uh, uh, item or emote, 
in view 2 uh, the quick action bar on the bottom left still stays as the as the first uh, view so yes. only when you intentionally change it through that uh, then it will uh, actually change uh, the quick action view so again this wasn't intended uh, but it has now been fixed because um, I think there's a lot of uh, players that thought that maybe this was potentially uh, intentional and we just wanted to assure players that uh, this w this was just about and I think that affected people who played with the gamepad as well right yes correct so this that issue was also uh, occurring with the gamepad but now uh, it's, be it's been fixed so hopefully that yeah, I know some people were quite upset about this. That solves that problem. It may be a bit too early, but uh, we have also considered some of the other feedback that uh, players were sharing about mouse and keyboard improvements, and we are still making slight tweaks and improvements to to those. Uh, so uh, I think we'll share more when when we have them. Uh, trying to pick maybe a couple last questions. Oh yeah, there was a big topic that maybe we can address that happened during the weekend. Um, so last weekend we we noticed a lot of reports coming from our players, either on Discord or Reddit or Bug Reporter, that people were encountering quite severe uh, server issues. Yep. Uh, I know we've done some improvements to address it. I know we've identified the core of the issue. Uh, and let's I don't know who wants to talk about this. Uh, I'll take this. Uh, so for for server rubber bending is what we call it. Uh, there were a few times that this happened. Uh, thankfully, what we have uh, been able to do is identify the root of the issue. Actually, this last night, this this morning. So uh, we'll be introducing a fix which would uh, address this. So this will be a hotfix uh, following uh, season 3.1 and uh, this is currently the number one priority uh, on the project right now. Yeah, so hopefully it's happening less uh, already but if you're still experiencing it, please let us know. We are still uh, monitoring this very closely to try to fix it for good. Um, I think that's pretty much like um, I know there's a lot more, but there are quite uh, deep questions that will probably take a lot of time to answer. There's one question from the chat that I want to answer. Um, some players basically shared feedback that uh, if you've played season one, you played season two, you played season three, sometimes it can feel a little bit like you, we are adding new content, we are adding new features, new mechanics. Uh, but in terms of like the theme of the season is essentially a new antagonist, new color, new new, new team essentially, but uh, more the same. Are we planning to uh, change our formula moving forward uh, in the way we bring new content and the type of content we bring and the way we present it? Uh, I know we can't reveal too much once again, it's more like four year two plans. But do we know if we are planning to change uh, the formula a little bit? Ooh, I big know I have spicy question. question. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I know like, as, I, as I say the question, I'm like, what am I asking? Ooh. I know it's difficult. Uh, so if I need to jump in, I'll jump in and I'll help you. <laughs> Uh, we all signed NDAs on this project, and uh, it's a test, Ernest. It's a test, <laughs> and we're not supposed to reveal much more than we can see. But uh, there is a year two plan. Uh, there is a year three plan, and uh, we are actually examining uh, how we can change up that formula as well. Uh, year one is about rise of the kingpins. I wonder what year two could be. Hmm, <laughs> big mystery. I think a lot of the things that we shared on the stream that we said, oh, we can't really share yet, even even though we roughly know what what it is, uh, it's it it's more for us to be a bit cautious in what we also promise because I think one of the things that we don't want to do, especially for our player base, is to over promise and uh and and not deliver on them. So the best way in which we can deliver on what the community wants is actually. Have it in the game and share it in the patch notes. So that's a that's an absolute uh, uh, win for for uh, communication with players. Yeah, so absolutely. I think for year two and what lies beyond season four, we are not yet ready to share. And 
in due time we will once we have those details and things are more from that yeah i think for me the important part of like so the reason i ask this question is not necessarily to trick you into saying things you shouldn't be saying obviously <laughs> oh it definitely uh, felt like a trick right <laughs> That's yeah definitely not what i'm trying to do no, what I want to what I want to do is by asking the question is first of all to make sure that the community knows that we are aware of these key topics that we are we are spending a lot of time and effort reading feedback on Discord on Reddit talking to insiders uh, reading questions from the chat today um, and it's more about acknowledging that feedback and letting the community know that we are looking <coughs> into it and doing changes to make sure that that feedback is addressed in the best way possible. Uh, so for me, uh, I feel like we're very much at a stage where we launched a game more than six months ago now. We spent the first six months really like listening to community feedback, addressing all the high level issues that we could fix uh, and improve the quality of the game overall. Um, and at the same time, looking at, okay, what are the big things that the community want us to address on a more long term? And all these things are going to happen basically with season four a little bit and more so with year two and going forward. So that's why we can't really share much because there are big things, the big topics, uh, the big uh, things that we want to improve on and, and add to the game in the future. Um, but we are very much listening to what people want. Uh, the most obvious things, obviously, we talk about almost every stream with large ships, ma map expansions, all these things. We know people want them. Um, but we also know that we need to improve uh, you know, the formula of each season, uh, what is the objective of uh, which is my objective as a player, as a kingpin in the game, for each season, but also throughout the whole year, uh, and how do I progress with the game, and how does the game evolve and help me progress? So, big topics, and that's why we can't really go into details, uh, but we are aware of all this feedback, and we are actively looking at it. And I keep kicking my microphone in my face, but that should be okay. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, again, we always say that we are on Reddit, we are on Discord and we are on X and various social media platforms. Uh, Sam, I don't know about you, but you know when we are on the when I'm like Facebook or something like that. Okay, pretty uh, boomer boomer social media to use these days. But you know you click on the comments and you see what people say and some of these things uh, they make us excited. Some of these things they make us grief. Uh, some <laughs> of these things, you know, we lose sleep at night over it. And I, I assure you it's not because we are trying to top off manufacturers. It's because we are trying to make sure that, you know, all the things that you guys say, all the feedback that you guys share, these are the things that we want to address. These are the things that we want to also build in a live game like ours. And so always, always engage us on our social media. If you if you think we're not on social media, oh, ho, ho. Yeah, um, yeah, we are there listening to all the things you guys have. For to me, say. I have like notifications on my phone for like the Scumbone subreddit. So whenever there's like a new hot post, I open it up and and read it. And sometimes I see posts that kind of say, "Oh, um, I like th this is like a super long essay with like great constructive feedback." And uh, I read through all of it and. Uh, somewhere in the middle it says or like towards the end it says oh I'm not sure whether this will, will see it or, or anything but I hope this will be useful and it definitely comes in useful I I think that not just me but a lot of the devs on the floor are also reading all these posts and looking at how we can improve things and also with the release of season 3 on Steam we are also looking at uh, the Steam reviews and comments so a lot of sources of uh, feedback and uh, Alex is here as uh, is always constantly helping us to sieve through all of them and uh, to come up with uh, great insights so do continue to share your feedback and uh, guarantee you that at least a few devs will will see every every post that's out there and like even on uh, the Skull and Bones Discord general SNB chat channel as well absolutely we are way over time. The Twitch drops have been deactivated, so I expect everybody's going to leave any minute now. Um, oh. We don't really have much time for <laughs> more questions. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot more questions. I'd like to talk about uh, Steam release. I'd like to talk about uh, other stuff, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have time. There's one more topic I think I saw uh, come back a couple of times. Um, how do we plan to address pieces of eight slashing on next season? So I don't think we have an answer for this. I'm just going to say that this is a topic that we've been raising uh, already a couple of times instantly. And this is a good example of a topic that needs us to kind of uh, 
plan for the long term. How do we want to improve the Helm Empire and the end game on the long term? So we are aware that some people have found a way to stash piece of eight through war chest. We don't really have an issue with it because essentially it's people who spend a lot of time uh, in the game to accumulate this uh, these rewards, essentially, right? Um, but essentially, it, it does highlight the fact that we need to figure out how we want to improve on the Helm Empire in general in the future. So we are looking into it. Uh, and hopefully in the future we'll have a solution for that. With this, I think we need to call it a day. Uh, oh no. I'm pretty sure most of you have to go to meetings and have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Unless you want to do this all day, I'm happy to do it all day. <laughs> um, no, but more seriously, thank you very much for coming again on the deck. Uh, if you have last words you want to share with the community, go ahead. Now is your time. Ooh. We're really appreciative of the community that has been with us. Well, I mean, we're drawing towards the end of uh, year one. We are in season three now, right? And we're really excited for what's coming ahead in season year two, season X. <laughs> so we'll see you guys uh, when there's more information to share. I think for me, uh, personally, I'm also very excited about what's coming up in uh, beyond season four. A lot of uh, the dev work now is focused on what we can deliver beyond that, s beyond season four itself. So it's always very exciting to see big things coming together. Uh, so continue providing your feedback. Uh, it's something that we look very closely to. Uh, send your bugs, bug reports to Bug Reporter and uh, just keep telling us what you enjoy or what you don't enjoy uh, in the game and uh, we'll continue to work with players to uh, make the gameplay experience better by bringing quality of uh, live updates such as in these uh, mid-season updates as well. Uh, it's also very nice to see the community respond uh, positively to a lot of the changes that we are bringing in as well. I know for myself when the patch notes are just like launched every si single time, uh, like at midnight during our time I would just go on like Discord the, the Scott and Bones Discord to just read all the comments and kind of get a feel of how people are reacting so uh, yeah like somebody said on the chat uh, say hi to me and Ernest on, on, <laughs> on those social media platforms as well we'll probably spot all of those as well and uh, keep your feedback coming and uh, we can't wait to uh, also share with you what we have for uh, the upcoming updates. All right. Thank you very much, Sam. Thanks, Ernest. Thank you. With this, uh, this is the end of the deck for 3.1. Reminder, a lot of the things we talked about at the beginning of the stream will be happening next week with our 3.1 update. The patch note will be released on the website probably on Monday, the uh, day before the update. Uh, and a lot of the other things we talked about are obviously more like mid-term or, or long-term uh, coming either with season four or year two. There's a lot of things that we can't wait to share more details about, both with season, two, uh, season four sorry, and year two. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about it a bit more with the next stream or an upcoming dev stream as well. With that, this is it for today. I hope everybody managed to get their Twitch drops. Uh, if you haven't managed to get it, we will probably have Twitch drop activity for next stream as well. So you still have a chance. And I probably shouldn't be leaving the stream without at least acknowledging one thing, which is right <laughs> here on my cup. <laughs> so thank you again to everybody for joining in, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.